enjoy having breakfast in bed. I like waking up to the smell of bacon. Sue me. And since I don't have a butler, I have to do it myself. Dude, that intro is still fucking crisp. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's even crispier than the freaking Colonel Sanders extra crispy chicken sandwich. I, I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about right now. <laughs> fucking going crazy. What are you just I, going on? <laughs> I am sleep deprived at the moment, so I am struggling. Damn. But anyway, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Yossinator. Welcome back to Austinator and Angry Care Bears Talk Movies. This Hello. week... We are wrapping up the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise today. I've been a wild ride. It has been an eventful roller coaster, to say the least. And you know, today we're just we're just gonna we're just gonna talk some shit. You know, we're just gonna. It, this is the last one in the series. Yep. You know, and unfortunately, <clears throat> does it go off on a high note? Or a low note. We'll we'll find out. But Jerry comes in in the chat. What's up, Jerry? Get some 1080p images, Boomer. Well, Jerry, I would, but uh, I just don't feel like it. You know, I I feel like I feel like HD images are overrated. You know, I think everyone uses them. I think 1080 is the way to go nowadays. I mean, 180. Very true, very true. <laughs> but today we are reviewing the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street that was made by Platinum Dudes. Now, if you wonder who uh, made Pla who actually runs Platinum Dunes, well, it is the one, the only Michael Bay. Oh my god. Remember that? Remember him? He ruined Transformers and Teenage Mutant Turtles. Didn't he have a hand in this? I feel like I saw his name in the credits somewhere. He was, I think he was the producer. the producer. Yeah, I think I saw he produced it when I, I just remember the first time I watched it, I saw his name in the credits. I'm like, what? Am I seeing that correctly? The explosions guy? Yeah, he, he runs Platinum Dunes and Platinum Dunes is responsible for the remakes of A Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh Friday my God, the no. 13th. Teenage Mutant, oh, well, not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but Robert Michael Bay had a lot to do with that one. Yeah, he directed those. And he can go fuck himself. <laughs> the man who's ruined your childhood more than anybody else, Michael Bay. And so this remake came out a year after the Friday the 13th remake, which wasn't bad. No, um, it was actually a pretty decent remake, especially for the time. You know, like in 2009, you're expecting like a god awful film, but it's like it was pretty solid. Like, I mean, especially as a remake, but. We're not talking about Friday. We're talking about Nightmare. Yeah. And uh, now, this movie came out on April 27, 2010 in Hollywood, but it actually came out three days later in the United States. Mm. How does that work? I don't know. It should have <clears throat> came out at the same time, but they're idiots. Uh, this movie was directed by Samuel Bayer, and the screenplay was written by Wesley Strick, Eric Heiserer. Um, and it stars Jackie Earl Haley, Kyle Gallner, Rooney Mara, Katie Cassidy, Thomas Decker, and Kellen Lutz. Kyle's my boy. I'll back him to the day I die. Oh, Kavari's in the chat. What's up, Kavari? Good day, dear sir. Well, how, howdy, Kavari. How are you today, sir? Now, before we even get into the meat and potatoes, so this movie had a $35 million budget. How much wow. do you think it made in the how much do you think <clears throat> it made in theater? I want to say 91 million. You were close. What is it? It made 117.7 million. That's not that close, but all right, cool. And it is currently the highest grossing film in the series. Cuz it was the return People are seeing it, like, advertised as being scary again. And, I mean, whether you found it scary or not is subjective. But it was going a scary route versus the comedical route. Yeah, so, 
fun fact about this film, they originally wanted to do kind of like what they did with Friday the 13th, where they were going to take the, the best elements from each of the movies and decide to and make a storyline with them, but then they're like, yeah, let's just take the first movie and let's try to make it scarier. I kind of wish I did uh, that. I combined the first few movies. I just feel like it would have been a lot better, because, like, I won't lie, I don't hate this remake. I just don't think it has a reason to exist. I watched it, and I didn't really gain or lose anything. It just was okay. Like, that was it. It's nothing special. Very true. Very true. Jerry comes in. They got punked. Yeah, I think they got punked a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we can just go into our overall thoughts now. Um, I I don't hate this as much as Freddy's Dead, because Freddy's Dead was a god-awful movie. This one tried to do something scary and it tried to be a horror movie and like i said it's subjective on whether or not you think it works or not and i can tell that except for rooney mara she was the only one who did not try and it was so obvious in her performance i thought she was so boring i'm like why is nancy in this film see i went into this movie Because of Dead by Daylight. I play Quentin a lot in Dead by Daylight. He's kind of one of my mains. So I'm like, all right, I want to watch his movie. I want to see him in action because I really like this character. I really enjoy playing as him. And I watched the movie and I thought he was the main character. I'm like, they put him in Dead by Daylight. He's got to be the main character. And I'm like, why are we focusing so much on Nancy? (laughs) Her performance is putting me to sleep. Anytime Quentin was on, I'm like, awesome. They're going to do that thing, right? They're going to build up Nancy. You know, she's got the same name. They're going to think she's the main character, but they're going to pull a Tina and it's going to go to her boyfriend, Quentin. That's going to be like the new twist instead of it being the girl best friend, final girl. It'll be a final boy who is the boyfriend, except she never died and she was just kind of there. Like... I think that's one of the things that dragged the movie down a lot, too, is the fact that they were focusing on a boring character with an even more boring performance. Like, I think the only... Like, I feel like a lot of the performers did their best. Especially, you know, Kyle, Clancy Brown, and Jackie Earl Haley. I thought they were great, but they just didn't have a great script. And that's what I feel bad for because they like they were very talented individuals in this film. I mean, they were other, they were wasted or others clearly didn't try. And I feel like Jackie Earl Haley could have been a really good Freddy. I really liked him in some of the scenes. You know, he can be a scary guy, especially when he plays the two parts of, you know, innocent seeming guy until obviously the final part, you know who, like, screams in terror, then turns to this monster. I think he does that well. He's a fantastic actor. I can't remember if Robert England agreed with the recasting with him. I know Robert England didn't like the script, but I think he did say Jackie was a good fit. And yes, if that is true, okay, I agree. The makeup looked really bad, though. And that's so unfortunate because I loved his performance. I thought he was a good Freddy. I thought he was very intimidating. In, like, the way he delivered the jokes, you know, and normally you would laugh. But in this one, it was, like, really unsettling. And I thought he did a a, a fantastic job. And um, with, with Kyle as Quentin, like I said, I thought he was the main character the whole time. He was, he was carrying, like, the whole, like, protagonist part because... I mean, he was the only one putting obvious effort. I felt with his character. I sympathized with him. I understood his anger and frustration. He was doing all the research, you know. He's try- He's. I really like the whole, like, how he has ADHD, so he has pills to keep him awake in that he becomes addicted to them and even kind of tweaks out at the pharmacy trying to get more. I really liked that and how that's bringing that in. I thought it was a very cool, like, thing to put in the movie it makes sense and even micro sleeps i thought that was a very cool addition because 
that's that was never mentioned before. So like having little hallucinations because you're falling asleep is I, I thought was pretty cool. And like I also really enjoyed Cl- I mean it's Clancy Brown. You can't not enjoy Clancy Brown. He's Mr. Krabs himself. And just that's all I really got to say. I mean, the acting was good for the other characters. I don't really remember half their names. I just remember that they did not look like high schoolers. And I it took me out of the movie, especially the blonde haired chick, Chris. I, I thought, I'm like, why is this 25 year old doing in high school? But that's just a thing I noticed. But I thought, you know, the kills were really good. I, I liked that they kind of redone Tina's a bit. I mean, you can't mess that kill up. They didn't really need to remake that one, but it was interesting to see. Um, I really liked the one, uh, the, uh, Jesse, when he was in prison, how his chest exploded. That's the Mori in Dead by Daylight. They put that animation in. And I thought that one was pretty cool. I mean, like, seeing his glove go through someone's chest like that as they're you know, trying to hide from him was pretty creepy. I think the only kill I really didn't like in the film was the ending one, because the CGI looked terrible. Like, it had a cool idea of Freddy coming out of the mirror and killing the mom and taking her. But it's, it just, it it was very, it looks very dated with the CGI. But it's still better than the blow-up doll in the first movie, I will say. (laughs) But, I mean, that's all I really got for the positives you know it's just kind of like there are a lot of positives in this film it's just when you put it all together with the script they had and some of the performances and just the flow of the movie it still doesn't work it just it just misses the the point of like what makes it work and it just kind of falls apart that way you know it's just it's one big meh movie i don't not recommend it but i don't recommend it either if somebody asked if they should watch it or not i'd say yeah because wh- you know why not why not watch it but i wouldn't go out and say yo you gotta watch this movie like if you want a new freddy movie i guess watch this but even then i just tell you to stick with the original if you just want to yeah. watch i mean like if you're anything like me and you're a fan of dead by daylight then yeah i would recommend it you know if you like the character Quentin, because, I mean, I think he was a fine addition to the protagonist. Like I said, he's one of my favorite characters. But that's literally all I watched it was for that character. And that's kind of the only thing that kept me going through the movie. I'm like, I really like the character. Too bad he's in this movie. Kamara's like, they made seven of these movies? uh, They made nine movies, if you don't count the... Well, they made six movies in the original series and then i i don't really consider a new nightmare part of the series i call it no it's outside of the series i'd say it's like a spin-off film it's it's not really a sequel but it takes place with with the movies it it takes place outside of the movies like out in our world and then there's freddy versus jason which is a it's like The best way I can describe it is, like, how Nightmare Before Christmas is both a Halloween and a Christmas film. This is both a Freddy and a Jason film. So, it's It's both a a Nightmare and a crossover film. And And then this is a remake, so... Yeah, this is just a remake. It it has something to do with the rest of the franchise, but literally just because of the killer premise and name. It's it's a remake, so it's also its own thing. And then Jerry comes and Johnny bit my wiener. Okay, Jerry... (laughs) <laughs> that uh oh very interesting jerry thanks for <laughs> thanks for bringing that up um no don't thank him what the hell well i i i don't know what to say in that situation so it's like <laughs> um all right now my thoughts are they i don't know how to describe it because it's a remake so it's yeah, like you have to compare it to the original I still will continue. I will always say the original is better. Yeah. Um. I this movie does have some good ideas in it. It's just I think they're horribly executed. Yeah. Uh, I think the problem with this movie, it's just a retread of the original film in a lot of aspects. There are some okay things here and there, but in just in general, I don't think this movie works that well. 
Um, there's a couple performances that I really like. There's like a scene here and there that I'm like, okay, I really like the scene, but not enough for me to be like, oh my God, I'm going to go back and watch this movie because... I mean, even if they had great, like the best performances you've ever seen, you can only do so much in what you're working with. Oh, absolutely. It's I call this movie kind of like the watered down Nightmare on Elm Street film. Like, yeah. It's it's just like it's all right on its own, but because it's a remake, I would rather just have you watch the original. But I wouldn't say throw it off the table and never watch it. It's it's just kind of like leave it up to the viewer. It's it's so weird on how I describe it cuz it's like I didn't hate it, but I certainly didn't love it either. It's it's there. It's not the worst thing I've seen. It's certainly not the worst remake I've seen. Yeah. But it is just one big average. <laughs> it's it's just bleh. Like it just yeah. it's not like and I agree, it's not the worst thing ever made. Like I if you're like somebody who gets easily scared, this movie would probably be like really scary for like casuals, but for me, it's just, it's like, you know, even the original Nightmare films are scarier than this. Like, I'll get into that when I get into my negatives, but uh, Jerry comes in, Dead by Daylight players are cringe. Well, yeah. And then Jerry's like, feels weird, man. Not the guy putting sus stuff in the chat saying feels weird. Yeah, because Jared, Jerry's that is a sussy boy. <laughs> All right. Now, let's move on to our positives. Um, I'll go first this time around. Um, positives? I thought that's what we were just talking about. No, we were in our overall thoughts. Oh, uh, okay. Because I was just talking about my positives. My overall thoughts is it's average. But my po I did go over my positives just because there's not a ton, but I might as well get them out of the way first because there's not a ton. Right. And my positives are, I'm basically going to echo some of yours. Is I think yeah. the act some of the acting in this film is good. Clancy Brown, of course. You know, Mr. Well, yeah. Krabs. You, know. you can't not like him. Come on. He's just a good actor in general. Yeah, um, I, I, pff, man, I love the scene where he threw the Molotov. Uh, like, this is for my son. I'm like, yes, finally, a parent who cares about their children. <laughs> that, and also I will say, Jack, as much as Robert Englund is still the best Freddy, I have to give Jack Hero Haley this. He does try, and I think in certain aspects he is better, but... Robert Englund's still the goat. Like I like, I well, like yeah. Jack Earl Haley's voice in this film. Oh yeah, I love this voice. It was very menacing. I thought it worked pretty well. Like he was a really like. If I honestly, he is a great choice for Freddy. And I kind of, I know it'll probably be very impossible to do it, but I would like to see him maybe get another chance at being Freddy. At some oh yeah, point definitely. Of the line. But like. You know, it's like replacing Robert England as Freddy is an incredibly hard task to do, but I think he does it pretty well, honestly. It's like yeah. replacing Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. Nobody's going to do it. However, if somebody does their best and they do a good job, they'll never beat the OG, but they right. are a good fit. Oh, absolutely. Um, I like, there's one scene in this movie that I think is really good, and I really like the scene was, the nightmare sequence in the prison where I believe Jesse and Freddie's like, he's like, dear God. And then Freddie's like, no, just me. And then that was a good line. I won't lie. I don't like the script very much, but I thought that was pretty good. Like that entire scene was great. And then like him putting it in, like taking the glove and like putting it through his chest. And then he's mm -hmm. like, did you know that, you know, after, you know, you die or something, like your body is still like alive for only a couple minutes. And then he's like, so we still have a few minutes to play, and then Jesse's screaming. I'm like, that was really cool. I thought mm. that was really, really good. And I will admit, in some of the Nightwear sequences, I will say that some of the CGI looks okay. Like, yeah, um, it's just it's dated. 
Yeah, but for the most part, the CGI in this film was very rough. Even back then, the CGI was very yeah. questionable. Um, there's a couple of good ideas in this movie, but I again, they're executed poorly. Like the micro sleep thing, I like that. It's diff- I like that. It's different. We didn't get that in the original film. Unfortunately, it just not enough of it was. They didn't go too far in depth with it. If that makes any sense, um, and I like the idea of them maybe trying to do the Freddy maybe being innocent thing. Like that is an interesting idea. Unfortunately, the pacing of this film was horrible. That it actually kind of made it so bad. Mm. Like, if you started this movie off with, you know, the flashback sequence where Freddy is, you know, basically getting torched, like, I think, and maybe him saying, I didn't do it or something, you know, it's like... I and feel then like... It, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, if you start off with that, I agree. I was gonna say, spoiler alert, the twist of the movie is that he actually wasn't innocent, and he was a child, uh... He hurt children. Okay. Yeah, that's putting it lightly. Um, I feel like the movie would have been so much better if he truly was innocent because it would give him more of a motive to want to get revenge. Right. And it wouldn't be, it would be like changing stuff up from the original. And it gives an interesting twist that goes, wow, that's something new. We actually have a Freddy who's innocent. He never was any of this. People people just, like, took it the wrong way or a kid just decided to lie or whatever. And, and if there was a child who lied about it or they all lied about, you know, oh, yeah, he was evil for whatever reason, you know. It would have made sense on why he would have a motive to go after these kids, too. Like, you made me this, so I'm going to take your life like you took- you made your parents take mine. See, that would have been great, except this movie fucked it up really bad. I know. I think another thing I, um, really enjoyed was Kyle's performance when he confronted, uh, his father about Freddy's death. And when he looked at him and said- how do you know? How do you know he truly wasn't innocent? You know, as he and he just kind of goes, you know, I didn't know, but I just wanted to make sure, he, like, you know, he wanted, he didn't want to, like, let him go if he was truly, um, you know, evil. And the way he just, like, storms out because he thinks his father just murdered some innocent guy. I thought it was really interesting to see because normally when they fight, it's because they, they don't care about their kid and they're not believing them. But on this time, it's it's the parent trying so hard to protect their kid and their kid just has this idea of, well, what if they were wrong? Which also really isn't, it wasn't in the original. Nobody really questioned whether or not Freddy truly did it or not, which is also an interesting thing to bring in. You know, it's like, it brings this little mystery of just like a what if. Unfortunately, Quentin was wrong and his compassion got the better of him and they kind of went right into the spider web trap. But I feel like it would have been a lot better if he was right and his father was wrong but still didn't care because he just wanted to make sure his son was safe. And, you know, he goes in and he finds out that none of that was ever true. However, they would have set that up. And just, you know, but Freddy still wants to kill them because they lied and made him suffer for so long. And see, that would have been a better story, but Mm -hmm. instead we got a watered-down version of the first movie. Unfortunately. And then Jerry comes in, uh, gotcha, bass. Okay, buddy, okay. Um... All right, let's talk about our negatives. I think we both have a lot of negatives with this movie, um, probably. Well, actually, I guess I got one last positive. I like that this movie is more trying to be scary. Yeah. An emphasis on try because this has like that 2010 level of scare where it's just jump scares. 
Yeah, I didn't find the jump scares to be as annoying as, like, you know, with the conjuring brought in, how it builds up and stuff. I like, you know, like, the jump scares are at least, they can be effective because you don't always see them coming in this film. Even if they're really lame, you know, I, I can, I don't like it, but I'm so used to seeing, like, the jump scares, yeah, they got the building music, and then the silence, and then the boom, or the building music, and then boom. So tired of that. So when I wasn't expecting it, a few actually got me. That's how much horror movies have been ruined, is that some of the bad jump scares made me jump, just because it popped out and said boo, and without the stupid music. Right. Um... But it's like, there are some that were good, but the less you do the more effective they are right but this movie overdoes it yeah like i i think now we're getting into our negatives and the first one i have to say is the jump scares like you know i don't have a problem with jump scares but you have to do it n not frequently like and you gotta it make it what it is a, a scare not build up oh grab the edge of your seat it's coming no just do it and it's got to make sense, too. Oh, absolutely. Um, the CGI, for me, was a big negative. Um, yeah. There was th and some of the scenes where they just redid, they just took from the original movie and just was like, oh, let's put it in this film. It's like, they were done pretty half-assed. Like, I mm -hmm. was not a fan of the wall, you know, where they redid the whole wall one. Yeah, that looked really, really bad. I mean, practical is always the way to go, and it, it's just, it looks so bad. It, it just, it didn't need to go all the way out and look at her and stuff. It just, it looked terrible. All they needed to do was put up a latex wall and have someone stand on the other side of it. That's all they needed to do, and then they decided, no, let's just do CGI so it looks absolutely terrible. Oh, absolutely. The CGI in this movie was not done well whatsoever. Um, there was a few scenes here. It's just like, this movie's problem is it's not original original. Like, despite a couple different ideas, it's literally just the yeah. same movie. It's, I mean, yeah, it's a remake. Um, a lot of the acting in this movie is just meh. Like, um, Katie Cassidy, you know, she plays Laurel Lance in... Uh, arrow and i thought she was okay but she was only in the movie for like 20 minutes at most um she was barely in the movie um yeah uh um i believe her name's uh rooney Ma rooney mara mm -hmm. you could tell she did not give a shit like, she did not want to be in this movie. She didn't want to do this movie. So I don't know why she's in the movie. Like, if you didn't want to be in a horror movie and you didn't want to do this movie, why are you here? Why wasn't she recasted? Like, she didn't want to do it. She didn't like the Nightmare franchise. It's like... Why are you here? How, like, why is your agent making you do this? Why did you say yes? Not to mention, the thing is... Acting is a job. This is a job. I don't care if you don't like the movie you are acting in. You must do a good job because this is what you are getting paid for. I don't care if you don't like a movie. Obviously, if you're writing the movie, I want someone who likes it. But if you're going to act in a movie you don't like, either don't take it or suck it up, buttercup, and work for that check. Because you not caring and bringing down a major part of the movie because you were the main character is so unfair for everyone trying. Like, you know how awkward it was watching the scenes of Nancy and Quentin when Kyle is trying in his scenes? And I can tell he is trying. He's a good actor. And I'm watching this piece of wood just right next to him. And I'm like, why is she here? Like... It was so jarring to me, unlike the contrast of the trying versus the one who probably actually was sleeping on set. Yeah, and she she was really, like, I agree, she was just really bad. And She's not even a bad actress, she just didn't care, and it shows. And it's, yeah. like, watching someone who cares versus the person who doesn't 
it's just it's not something you want to see in a movie. Um, I this is something that I know like as I I will give this movie credit. It does try to be somewhat different, but the fact that they made like because in the original films, you know, Freddy, you know, killed kids. Mm-hmm. Um, he he was like I know like the original you know scripts were had Freddy be somebody who was sick in the head and a worse with kids yeah he did stuff to kids and you know i it wasn't it's implied in the movies but it's not it doesn't beat you over the head with it they just wanted you to know that he killed kids but in this one they wanted you to know that he didn't kill kids he did something worse than killing kids which is interesting you know and i think it can work you know as long if he doesn't kill the kids he just hurts them Especially since, you know, their parents come along and they kill him and he just comes back for the same kids a few years later instead of the um, the children of the kids that he was going to kill. I don't mind that change and I think it works well timeline-wise. It's just, I don't know. Like, I don't mind the timeline change. It's, it's just, <sighs> what am I trying to say? It's just like we we know he did awful things to kids, but I wish that it was the opposite that he was framed. Yeah, and honestly, that would have been interesting. Like, because the point of a remake is to be different than the original. You know, if you're going to waste my time with a remake, at least try to do something different. You know, as much as people will give the Rob Zombie remake shit, at least you Halloween, try something new. It tried something new, the Friday the 13th remake. Granted, it's not perfect, but, you know, at least it tried to be something mm-hmm. different. This movie is not even trying to be different. And that's where this movie's biggest flaw is. It's just an exact copy of the original film, ex- except for maybe a few changes. Yeah. That, that to me, is a waste of time. It's like, it's kind of like the Psycho remake. It's, I mean, granted, it's not shot for shot, but it's similar. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I'm not, it's just one of those things where, you know, if you're somebody who's, like, new to horror movies, like, this would be up their alley. But if you're somebody who's, like, a big Nightmare fan, do not go into this movie expecting anything new because you're just getting the first movie because you have the, you know, the... The female character that you think's the main character, but then she dies. So then turns. So then the other female character, um, then she's the main lead, and then the boyfriend comes in, and then you know Freddy kills a bunch of people, and then at the end, you know they bring Freddy out into the real world, and then the movie ends with Freddy killing the mom. Which honestly, I will admit, Freddy killing the mom in this one looked a lot better than the original film. But that's not really saying much, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, and even then the kills in this movie are just not that great. Like, granted, I'll give him credit, you know, for the most part, the kills, you know, they try to make it somewhat realistic by having Freddy kind of make it look like that it they were killed by suicide because that was what the original movies kind of did is like, so Freddy, no one knew that Freddy existed. So it's like, okay. That makes Suicide sense. or murders, yeah. Like the the death in the diner. I thought, okay, that was actually done in a decent way because you had it look like um, for, um Dean. I think he, that's what his name was, Dean. Yeah. Like, where he like slit his throat, like, but it was actually it Freddy looked that nice. Did it. Yeah, it, looked it did. Like a pretty good effect. Like there were a couple decent deaths in this film. Um, Chris's death again. I like Tina's death in the original better, just because. It, don't get me wrong, the death in it was here was fine, but it was just like it again, it's just copying the original movie, and it's just like okay, whatever, you know, it's like and some of the things they just take out, like take out the original movie and just they put it in here and just done worse, like the whole wall thing, which was used with CGI and that looked bad. Um yeah. The stuff in the bathtub, I thought that was really weird. Like, it's just this entire film, unfortunately, kind of 
it kind of fails because it's a remake type yeah. of thing. Like if this was like the first movie in the series and like you're kind and it's not a remake, it would have been fine. Like it would have been something interesting. Mm -hmm. But this is Nightmare on Elm Street, a franchise that's been well established for years at this point. And you're kind of having to remake it. It's like if you don't change anything, then it's just a shot for shot remake. If you do something different, people are going to be pissed because then they're like, well, why would you change that? It's like you're never going to win, especially when it comes to a remake like this. Yeah. And another thing I hate about it, too, is the way Freddy looks in this film is he looks really bad. Like, yeah. I get that they went with the realistic burns, but it looked horrible. Like, it kind of makes Freddy's dead, the way you look in Freddy's dead look somewhat better. Yeah. But it's just it, something about his nose that just looks really weird with the makeup. Yeah, and then it's like, again, take nothing away from Jack or Haley, but just the look of him looked bad. Um... Other than that, I, I mean, other than the fact that the story is pretty predictable and mm -hmm. watered down and just the way everything, it just, the way everything flo flows together, it was just not very good. Yeah. Uh, some of the acting was just, eh. Um, it's just not, nothing, it's like as much as this movie does try and it has a couple of decent ideas, this movie just falls under its weight. It's it's just a very just it's just it's just a typical Hollywood remake, you know? It's yeah. it's like you're not it was just made for a quick buck. That's all it was. And unfortunate and that's unfortunate because I see potential in a remake, especially with something like this. You can do that. But unfortunately it's just it didn't work for at least for me. Um, do you have any negatives? My negatives were definitely, I think that some of the casting choices were a bit weird. You know, like how I mentioned some of them, uh, looked very old for the role. Like they looked noticeably older than 16, 17, which I know is a common trope with a lot of horror films. But it was really noticeable here. It wasn't, like, supposed to be cheesy or funny. It was supposed to be a serious film. Therefore, it kind of took me out. Um, I, a lot of the acting was either hit or miss. Like, you know, I said the most notables who were good at acting. I thought Rooney was, <laughs> she definitely should have picked another movie. Others were just okay or forgettable. It was just, it was kind of a mess in that aspect as well. Um, I thought the CGI in some of the scenes were terrible. Like the, the wall scene where Freddy was coming out at Nancy. And the ending kill with the mom. I, I just... <sighs> a lot of it was pretty slow or boring or it moved too fast. And honestly, it's, it's just a movie that doesn't need to exist. And no, it doesn't. that's the sad part about it is that it could have been something really cool or interesting or switching up the old movie, but it chose not to. It played the safe route and just tried to redo what the old ones did with a few cool new ideas that would have been fantastic. But because it's relying on all the other old stuff, it's kind of hard to even appreciate it when there's just more you're complaining about. It's not a terrible movie, but it's not a great movie at all. It is a very average film. If you want to watch it, go ahead. If you don't, I get it. And that's all I really got to say. Problem is, the movie isn't that bad. It's just it's just horribly unspecial. And that's really what it comes down to. It's just it's nothing special. Like no effort was put into it. It's like I, I it, it kind of baffles me that movies like this are made, but the reason why movies like this are made is because money. people want to see something scary, and that's what it comes down to <laughs> that and money. You know, it's like it just oh jeez. Uh, Jerry comes in. Freddie touched me. 
Okay. Uh, very interesting, Jerry. Very interesting. Uh, LG's like, what? Care Bears movie? Honestly, <laughs> I'd rather watch the Care Bears movie. Hey, the Care Bears movie weren't bad as a kid. I grew up watching those. True. I think I had. I think I had one of them on VHS. I think. Yeah. They're fun. Uh, Oh, they're, yeah, they're, they're okay. You know, like, they're kids' movies. They're yeah. not supposed to be Citizen Kane. No, I mean, but they're they're good for kids, I guess. Yeah, I could rewatch and be fine with it. Yeah. Um. All right. Do you have a final grade for this movie? I think my final grade is definitely going to be a C, and a five out of ten. Okay, um, I'm. A, you know what? I'm probably just gonna go a D plus. Um, for what it's worth, it's not horrible. Like I could see somebody liking this movie and enjoying it and getting why. Like I can understand somebody enjoying it. I don't necessarily under. I I. It's not for me. I'll say that. Yeah. I would just I stick with the original film. Like, I would even recommend the original movie before this. I'd recommend Nightmare 2 and 3 and 4. Hell, I'd even recommend Nightmare 5 over this. You know? I, so. It's just... With this film, I see more reasons on why people would enjoy it more than why it's, like, the worst remake ever made. But if somebody were to not like this film, I would understand why. But I can also see why somebody would really enjoy this film. It's just so hit or miss that I can see both sides to it. It's, it's just, just so there's not much to say. It's just so painfully average and unspecial that this movie kind of failed. Yeah. And it's sad because I can see promise in this film. I could yeah. see interesting ideas, and there were a couple casting decisions that made me go, okay, there's a scene here and there that's like, okay, this is great. And I think there was like a scene where, um, uh, I think they brought back Hypnosil in this film, I think. I think they might have mentioned it, but I know like Quentin... The Dream's Presence? Yeah, I know, I think they mentioned it, but I know like the only pills I see in the movie really that I really remember is Quentin's, uh pills for his uh, his ADHD that keep you awake because you know with with ADHD you're you're very tired a lot because it's just it's a draining like thing on your mind so you become very tired so his pills keep him awake and in a movie like this I think is a perfect reason on like why he's abusing his pills and even interesting when he's trying to get more and everyone just thinks he's tweaking out and why people probably wouldn't believe him in a lot of situations. I think that is fantastic idea, actually, because you got like, you know, you got a little bit of representation. You got what he's staying awake with. You got why no one believes him. But if it was in another movie, another nightmare movie, oh, my God, it would have been so perfect. Oh, but, absolutely. Oh, I just, it, it just, uh, there was so much potential with him. And look what they've done. And Jack Earl Haley, you know, I feel bad for the guy because he I genuinely know. tried. He's, I thought, he's good. If somebody were to succeed Robert England as Freddy, I think Jack Earl Haley had the potential to do it. It's just, I would love movie, for him to come back as it. Oh, I, I would like, I'd like him to have another chance at some point. It's oh, definitely. Just, it sucks that this movie basically handicapped him from the beginning. Yeah. That it, it's it was it's like anyone again, who was good in this movie was handicapped due to the script and just like the, a lot of the writing. It's just like uh, so many also, good actors uh, wasted. I'm gonna say this too. It, don't I don't want people comparing Robert England and Jack Earl Haley because first of all, that's not really fair. Because, and they're different Freddies. They're different variations of the same character. They're different Freddies, and also. Robert England was in more Freddy movies than Jack Earl Haley. So it's like, you yeah. can't really debate on like who's the. Like, if you're comparing first films, I would still say Robert England was better. <laughs> but it's like, but nobody can touch, nothing can touch the original. Like, like I said, it's like replacing Mark Hamill and then getting upset that the guy they got wasn't nearly as good as Mark. Mark made the character like Robert made Freddy. There's no replacing them. It's just finding somebody who can 
carry the role, not take it over. Oh, absolutely. Um, this movie made shit ton of money, but this was basically bombed. It bombed critically. Like, yeah, it received negative reviews from critics, and of course, fans didn't really like it. So, as far as like, is there ever going to be a new another Freddy movie? Probably. probably Actually, probably, yeah, you are right. They're remaking everything. They're doing that with Halloween. They're doing the same thing with Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw. And I'm pretty sure they're doing they're doing it with Chucky with his TV show. It's so like what? And they just did it with Scream recently. And so. they're doing it with Hellraiser soon. Oh yeah, that's true. So it's like I wouldn't be surprised if they do a remake for it. Like, because I know, like, in 2015, they were already, they were going to do another remake, which I'm like, okay, I guess. A remake of a remake. Fun. It's like, it's like that That always ends up well. And they were going to have the guy, the writer who did Orphan. Uh, I heard it was a pretty good film, but I never really wanted to watch it. And Robert Englund wanted, uh, I think he wanted, wanted Kevin Bacon to play Freddy, which... That would have been interesting, but unfortunately, the remake was in development hell for so long, and then yeah, uh, because New Line was like, "Oh, we need we need more Conjuring movies." It's like, oh my god, Conjuring movies suck. I'm sorry, they suck, dude. They're not they're not scary, and they created this awful formula of the jump scares that I mentioned before. Unfortunately, they make too much money, so it's like, you know. James Wan, he tried to undo what he did with Conjuring, and he tried, and he made Mal- um, *Malignant*. And I don't know why people are hating on that movie so much. It's new, interesting, it ain't perfect, but it's so much fun, interesting, and a good watch. And you know what? We should review that sometime. Oh, all right. Well, then I I'm gonna put that on my list then. Yeah, *Malignant*, James Wan latest horror film. People don't like it, but I'm like, why? It's it's definitely inspired by other films, but it's pretty original on its own. It reminds me of 70s horror, where they weren't afraid to go anywhere with some other stuff. And now, Malignant is officially added to our list of movies to review. Awesome. Uh, Penny comes in. How many goddamn nightmare movies are there? Nine. This is the last one. Um, but... Uh, I, but then, of course, 2019 was revealed that the Nightmare franchise basically got reverted back to the Craven Estate. Yeah. And uh, they're they're trying to figure out how the fuck they're going to do another Nightmare movie because it's like I hope they don't. <laughs> uh, they they're apparent they apparently were pitching movies and there were there were some <laughs> concepts of and this is not confirmed but there were apparently were some concepts for a HBO Max series with. Robert England returning as Freddy. Robert said he didn't want to do it anymore. Why aren't they going to respect his wishes? He wanted to retire. I think if... And this is one of those things where I'm always going to say, money talks. I think, like, if they put a, Freddy as, like, a cameo or, like, a video game voice, that, yeah, I can understand bugging him to do it. But, like, a whole show or even a whole movie, that's just too much for the guy at this point. And I understand why he doesn't want to do this anymore. Like, the guy's in his 80s, I think. He looks good for his 80s, though. Oh, he does. I mean, I think maybe just the beard. Like, Yeah, it's just like... It I hope he still does the voice of Freddy at least, but like to play it physically, it's just it, it would be too much for him if no, I, that's what he's been saying. Because he's been saying, you know, he's getting too old for it. It's like if it if he truly is like it's wearing him down, don't mess with him. Come on, respect the poor man. The only way they can do that is if they CGI his face and voice on the like somebody else. Like voicing's somebody- easy. Like, maybe do the CGI. Because, like, they did it with Luke Skywalker. I'm pretty sure they yeah. could find a way to do it with Freddy. And you don't have to have him be, like, physically there. Like, like I would say you don't have him do any stunts. Like, don't. Yeah. Like, if you need to have him there to, like, provide, like, a voice or and, like, maybe show his face a couple times, like... They should have him be... Him. They should make him do, like, if he wanted to, of course. Have him right. do cameos that but if i mean don't get me wrong would it be awesome to see him as freddy again absolutely i'm not gonna be sitting here saying yeah. oh like 
if he doesn't come back, you know, if he comes back would be like shitting on it. Like, no, because at this at the same time, it's like you got you see guys like Nick Castle come back as freaking Michael Myers. It's yeah. like, it, is it necessarily impossible at this point to see him come back as Freddy? No, because because we see all these old actors come back, you know, yeah. for, to play roles that they said oh, they're done and then they come back. It's like. But, and just, I don't know, like, it just, I'm honestly, I'm just, I'm just, I really just want to see a new Freddy movie. Like, I think it's just getting to a point where it's like, I'm so fucking sick and tired of watching Halloween fucking 1500 and the 15,000, like, Texas Chainsaw remakes and the 30, 30, 30,000 Scream movie. Like, if fucking Leatherface, Scream... Michael Myers are gonna get fifteen thousand movies. Can't can we get let Freddy and Jason have a movie? Like, yeah. fuck. It's been like fucking thirty years since we saw a Jason movie. It's like fuck. Can we get? <laughs> can we just have? I mean, granted, I know the last one was like, oh wait, no, oh fuck. It's been like his last movie was in two thousand nine. So we're so we're talking thirteen years. Yeah. Uh... The only new thing with Jason we've ever witnessed was that video game, and even that had to be put on hold due to the lawsuit going on. But it's over now, so, so here's the hoping. Sh- I mean, we we should be getting a new Friday movie coming soon. Um, I heard because <laughs> Friday was so like overdone since it came out. I mean, they had a Friday movie every year, just like Saw. Saw and Friday were like the dominant thing of the 80s and 2000s because there was a movie for it every year so like i understand a long break for friday i I i'd like to see it back at the same time i kind of miss it you know it's like if star wars can have a fucking comeback let friday the 13th have a comeback you know yeah like shit i even if it's just jason doing some crazy shit like honestly like Friday the 13th is so silly that honestly Jace could get away with anything. Yeah. So it's like I you know Freddy you know Freddy and Friday and the Friday movies will make a shit ton of money if they ever release another one. Yeah, like, I mean Here's the hoping it'll be good. <laughs> God I hope. Because people are just settling for mediocrity. I mean, the yeah, new that's Scream, exactly what it is. The new Scream movie was not good. I don't know why people love it so much. Like, I granted, I wasn't really a Scream fan to begin with. I didn't really find any of the movies that innovative other than the twist. But I just didn't enjoy this movie. I found it obnoxious in a lot of areas. But people were like, oh, it's back to the OGs, you know, so it's good. I'm like... Why do we have to keep going back to the, like, I understand going back to the roots when it goes to tone, but when it's like, oh, we're calling in the OG characters to, because that'll bring in the money. It's like, it doesn't automatically make a film good. This film wasn't good. No. You know who I think did a good job at that? Resident Evil. They didn't reboot. It had a soft reboot. So it's like everything that happened beforehand still happens, but you can play this game. It could be your first game you could play in the franchise and still, you know, in- enjoy it for what it is. You could still understand what's going on other than a few references here and there that most people wouldn't even find. Is you got a new character, new villains, same set universe, so it's got the same rules. So, like, you know, but it tells it to you with the new character because you know, this character has no idea what's going on. So if you are new, you're learning with the character. If you're not, you know what's going on and what's going to go down. They went back to the same tone, but made a new story. I don't know why movies need to just go back to the original characters and same exact story. Like, you can do something new while keeping it in the same universe. Oh, absolutely. Like, I'm not saying going back to their roots is a bad thing, especially if you got to bring back old actors. I don't think that's a bad thing, but it doesn't always work. It, it like, just it just feels like more like pandering a lot of the times. Yeah, like if you're bringing back a main character, I get it because it's a main character. You kind of can't have it without them. But like when you're bringing back everyone and it's no longer just a like, okay, uh, I. 
I got a cameo, you know, I've seen this before, and they pull up a video, and it's got the actor talking about their experience or whatever. Like, that's cute and innovative, but when they bring back the character again and again and again, it's like, oh my god, can you, like, chill? Like, the, the way, like, in Scream, they bring back Sydney every single film, like, you think that they give up on this chick. Or something. It's just, you can only write the same movie over and over again. Exactly. Uh, before we wrap up, if you had to do a quick ranking of all the move of all the nightmare films, worst to best, how would you rank them? Worst to best, I think the worst would definitely be Freddy's Dead Nightmare Six, and then I'd put, um, uh, I would put five and then four, and then the remake, and then new. Oh, wait, no, 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 and then the remake, and then Freddy vs. Jason. And then I would put two, then New Nightmare, then three, and then one. Oh, so one's your favorite. I mean, how can it not? It rotates between one and three, but right now I would say one. Because it's just where it started. It's the first one I've seen, so I, that's why I'm attached to it. It just kickstarts everything, and it was just so, you know, breaking for the time. And... I think it's such a fun watch all the time, and it's... I like watching the first of just about anything, just because it's new and fresh in your mind, because it's the first one. And it's like, I love 2, 3, and even New Nightmare, and they're fresh in their own ways, but or at least a solid sequel. But, I mean, I just enjoy watching the original for the lovable cast, and just, like, the... the way they introduce Freddy. It's just, it's special, because he's such an icon. Oh, absolutely. Um, my ranking worst to best, I'd say Freddy's Dead's the worst. Then I'd probably go the remake. Then Dream Child. Um, fuck, now I have to really think about this. <laughs> um, Dream Child. So those are my, so those are like the bottom three. I'd probably put Freddy versus Jason next. And then I'd put Nightmare 2. Then Nightmare 4. Then New Nightmare. Then the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And then Dream Warriors would be my number one. <laughs> so our list kind of uh, is are really different. But at the same time, it's I think we're basically in the same both with what we think about them yeah yeah but see that's the best thing about it is like we can have our we we form our own opinions on this show it's not like yeah you know it's not like we're both like oh this is shit you know and then because like in one i think one nightmare like nightmare four i think you know i said it was actually not that bad and you're like no nah, it was bad like <laughs> But see, that's but that's what I like about the show. We can have different opinions, but we can have like a civil conversation about it. It's yeah, like, exactly. Anytime we fight, it's a joke, and then we laugh, and then go back to our serious conversation. Exactly. And besides, it's not that serious. It's literally we're talking about a movie for God's sake. You know, yeah. it's like it's really not that. It's just. To me, that this is why I like doing streams with Angry Care Bears, you know, reviewing movies. Because not only do we have differing opinions on a lot of things, but it's always nice to talk about shit that's not Marvel, DC, Star Wars, like, all, like, those major stuff. Like, Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, I like talking about movies that I... Because this is shit that I want to talk about, but... Yeah, everybody talks about Marvel and stuff. You know, not a lot of people talk about horror movies unless it's, like, James A. Janice. Exactly. And even, like... And don't get me wrong, I like talking about superhero stuff, but I also want to talk about, like, shit that's actually, like... And even, like, non-horror films. Like, I like talking movies about, like, Rocky and... Yeah. You know, films that have nothing to do with, like marvel the mcu like dc i like don't get me wrong i'll talk about the animated movies but it's like i don't really want to it's just like i want to talk about shit that's not main like i want to talk about shit that's like not fucking currently done by disney or stupid bullshit you know what i mean like yeah. i just want to talk about good shit at least for the most part 
But with that being said, we are officially done with the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Whew, what a journey. It was a really, it was a very interesting roller coaster. It was fun. Very, very fun. Nine episodes took us a couple months, but you know what? We did a okay. And it was I very like fun. Yes, I can't wait to start whatever we have next, whether it's just a single movie or another franchise. I believe next we are doing Matrix. Awesome. John's going to be on the show with us, so it's going to be quite the interesting podcast. It is going to be a three-man panel. Yes. Or maybe, maybe four, if I can get LDG. Yes. Um, which I think with Matrix, we're going to be talking about the uh, four live-action films and Animatrix. Yep, so the five films. So it'll be like five weeks of content. Yeah, and by the time we finish the first four, I feel like Matrix Resurrections, the newest one, will be out on DVD or at least streaming sites. So, Yeah, I'm not looking forward to talking about it or watching it. I will try not to fall asleep again while watching it. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't, but it is the movie that LDG got a refund for, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, it's still funny to me. But yeah, no, we're doing Matrix next. And then I think after that, we'll do like, I think we'll do Willy's Wonderland next. Awesome. And then we'll probably do something else after that. But those are, that's kind of like the basic, um, kind of the basic stuff mm -hmm. for right now. Because like Matrix is going to take a few weeks anyway. So it's not like I'm mm -hmm. immediately rushing out for content. So yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's get into a couple some of the chat here. Penny's like animated mm. nightmare movie done in the style of the Beetlejuice cartoon. That would be interesting. I wouldn't be against that. Would be interesting. I only know Scream from the scary movies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do. That's how I discovered Scream. I watched all those movies first, and then I watched Scream. Oh, Jackson, it was fun talking trash, and even when it was good. Jackson, but if you played the game, it was too much like the first game. And that pays like have me on for Willies. <laughs> Yo. All right. All right. Yeah. All well, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's man. a fun movie. It's Nicholas. It's FNAF, but with Nicholas Cage. I mean. <laughs> I feel like with some of like these like movies that we're gonna review, like even if it's franchise one offs, like we're gonna have, definitely have to have guest stars. Yeah. Or like guest. We're gonna panelists. have some. Yeah, we're gonna have a guest star for Willies Wonderland. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, Penny's going to be our guest panelist for the yes, Willie's sir. review. It is going to be fucking insane when we talk about that stuff. But we are over the hour mark. I Indeed. want to thank everybody for coming in the chat. Penny, Jack's Law, LDG, Jerry, Kamari, Don't forget about the random bot. <laughs> and maybe Matrix. Uh, We'll see about that. Because I've got some interesting characters that clash. Yeah, so we'll see. But you're definitely on for Willies. Don't worry about that. Yeah, but Matrix, I, that's probably gonna. I might. I we'll don't want to discuss. Say, I don't want to say no, but I know you have beef with one of the people I'm having on the panel, so I'm trying not to keep drama on my I'm, i don't want the drama leaking into my streams <laughs> like if that makes any sense like i don't because this channel i don't want to do shit with drama i just yeah. want to have it, this channel is mainly done for fun mm -hmm. we'll just have to discuss and see what goes as long as everyone agrees to be civil you know yeah if, if everybody's willing to you know talk and be civil and like not cause shit and they get along then i don't have a problem with it it's just if you're if it's just going to be done to cause shit then i'm not then i probably won't but yeah um but with that being said though um angry care bears tell them where they can find you at you can find me on my youtube channel at angry care bears or on twitch at angry care bears too sometimes i do stream if i'm feeling up to it and you can also find me on austin's channel for most tuesdays um on austin and Nader and friends talk pop culture and every saturday or sunday night depending for austin Nader and angry care bears review movies hey there we go 
See, I always keep reminding you about. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I, I'm proud of I the progress. I got it. I got it. <laughs> so, hey, good job. I, Thank you. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I got my channel. I do a bunch of stuff on the channel. Just sub subscribe. I think I'm at like over 200 subs. So, you know, subscribe if you want to. I mean, I'm not going to force you to, you know, like, just check me out. Um, you could find me tomorrow on the Real View 3000 Chris Knight's channel for the weekly wrap up if I feel up to it because I, I might crash tomorrow. I'm not gonna lie, I'm sleep deprived. Ugh. Um, you could find me on the Chaos Central channel for the Book of Boba Fett roundtable. I think this is the last episode of the Book of Boba Fett roundtable because we are talking the finale of Book of Boba Fett. So, you know, yay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Check me out on Wednesdays for the Hangout on, on the Basco Scenarios channel with Guy Scar. Um, check me out on Friday on Ninjoid's channel for Galactic Chat. And also late on Friday nights, me and the, and Jason Lee, we do a stream called the Late Night Snack Show where, you know, we just talk a bunch of stuff over there. Um, so just go check me out there. And, yeah, you can find me on my own Twitter at TheAustinator17. Sometimes I tweet. Sometimes I retweet. Sometimes I don't. It's a lottery. Go check it out. And also, you can find me on the Chaos Central Twitter. And guys, we are officially done with the Nightmare on Elm Street. So, ladies and gentlemen, take care. And I will see you guys. We will see you guys next week when we talk Matrix One. Bye. So, later, peeps. <laughs> <laughs>